In this screencast, we will analyze how to develop a static feed forward controller. In order to show this, we're going to take an example of a blending tank which is mixing two streams. And our goal, as the case with most blending tanks here, is to control the concentration of the desired solute exiting the tank. So there are two streams coming in. One stream is controllable, and we're utilizing it for the feedback part of the control analysis. However, we have a second stream which is coming in from elsewhere, and it's a flow rate that we cannot control. And an issue here is that both the composition and the flow rate can vary. So therefore, it's been proposed to, to utilize feed forward control for this. So the question is asking us to develop a PNID based on the information, and secondly, to develop a static feed forward controller. We'll talk a little bit more about static versus dynamic feed forward controllers when we get to that part of the question. So the first thing we'll do is develop the PNID. So for the PNID, we'll just first develop our tank. We'll assume it's well mixed. We'll have one stream coming in and a second stream coming in, and then a stream coming out. So the feedback control part is going to try to control the composition by adjusting the flow rate of one of the streams. What also is going to happen is that we need to measure both the flow rate and the composition of the other stream which can't be controlled. In this case, what we're going to do is these are going to go to a feed forward controller. We're going to send both signals to one feed forward control. The reason why we're going to do this is that we know the flow rate of this stream and the composition of the stream can be related together via the use of one or two balances. So therefore, we can have one equation which can relate both of them together. And then this signal will be sent as well towards the valve. But now we'll add a summing point here to show that it will take the sum of the feedback portion and the feed forward portion. So here we have our feedback feed forward controller. So for part B, we are looking at developing a static controller. So before conducting any analysis on this system, let's first discuss what a static controller is. So a static controller is assuming that we are basing everything on a steady state analysis. So this means no transfer functions, no derivatives, and stuff along those lines. For a case as simple as a tank, it may behoove you to use a dynamic analysis, the opposite of static, just because the mass balances here are relatively straightforward. However, there are many cases where developing the mass balances could be a bit challenging, or finding the information may not be available from a dynamic standpoint. So therefore, we use static controllers to handle that case. An additional part here is to remember that this is a feed-forward controller. So what this means is that we can take no information about the controlled variable. Otherwise, it would introduce a part of feedback in this analysis, which is not what we want to do here. We want to be able to handle the disturbances appropriately. So in order to develop a static controller, what we will take advantage of is either mass and or energy balances to do this work. So to do this, let's define a couple flow rates and compositions here. We'll define W1 as the flow rate of the stream with the valve on it, with a composition of fluid as X1. We'll have W2 and X2 for the wild stream, which will be monitored by the feed forward controller. And we'll have W and X represent what is exiting the blending tank. And our goal when developing a static controller here is to eliminate as many variables as possible. So for our system here, we'll have two balances of note, two mass balances. One will be a total mass balance, and one will be a component balance. The total mass balance, again, since we're doing a steady state analysis here, this will just be that W1 plus W2 equals W. And related is we'll have a component balance of W1x1 plus W2x2 equals Wx where x here, since w is a mass flow rate, x, x1, and x2 are mass fractions. So if we think about what we want to do here, our goal is if we look at our diagram, our goal is to send an appropriate signal to the valve, which is controlling w1. So therefore, what we want here is w1 to be a function of the two disturbance variables, w2 and x2, and then other variables as needed. So ideally, we would be able to develop something which would just relate W1 to W2 and X2 only. However, from a balance standpoint, this may not be feasible. 
So if we look at this from our component balance, it would not be hard to rearrange the component balance to solve for W1. So we can rearrange our component balance such that W1 equals Wx minus W2x2 divided by x1. So if we look at this, this is a perfectly valid equation here. But remember, our goal here is to look at other variables as needed. So we kind of want to eliminate them when possible. And if we look at the right-hand side, we see the fact that w and w2 can be directly related to one another by the use of the total mass balance. So what we're going to now do is, is we're going to incorporate the total mass balance. So in this case, the question is, which variable do we want to eliminate here, w or w2? Well, since w2 is one of the variables that is going to fluctuate when we want to measure it, that means it's really important for us to keep that in the equation. So therefore, what we're going to do here is eliminate w. To make the algebra a little simpler, we're actually going to move the x1 back. You'll understand why in just a second. And we'll end up with w1, x1. We're then going to move the w1 term over, w1, x, and this will equal w2, x minus w2, x2. We now have our equation. However, we are not done with our analysis here. So what we'll have here uh, when developing these static feed forward controls, we'll have three types of variables. The first is the controlled variable. And remember the fact that we don't have the measurement of this controlled variable. So therefore, what we'll do is we'll represent it at the set point. The second is the disturbance variable or variables. Here, we'll just leave them as is because they are variables which we are measuring using the transmitters. So therefore, those are values that we can continuously measure. The third are other variables that are left, other intermediate variables. And here, we'll just report them at their steady state position. And this is often done by putting a bar over the variable. So if we look at what we have here, our controlled variable, the variable we're trying to control is x. Our disturbance variables are w2 and x2. And if we look at what it's left, that leaves us with our other variable as x1. So therefore, for our final answer, putting this all together, w1 will equal w2, a variable that we can measure, multiplied by x set point, the set point value, minus x2, a variable that we can measure, divided by x1, I'm going to put a bar over that value because that will just take from its steady state value, minus x set point. And this is the development of our static or steady state feed forward controller. So this would not allow us for perfect control because it does not take into account time dynamics, but oftentimes we don't necessarily have that luxury. So this provides a nice, easy analysis in order to determine our transfer function. In this case, our constant value for our feed forward controller. But an important point, which we're not going to really go into here, is this represents a start to the feed forward controller. What's left here is, is we need to turn everything into signals. Because remember that transmitters and control schemes don't report back 50 gallons per minute. They report back particular signals, 20% transmitter output, 40% transmitter output, etc. So therefore, we have to be aware of information about the transmitters. And depending on your process, potentially the valves in order to put in a number inside the feed forward controller or an equation inside the feed forward controller because this represents an equation inside the feed forward controller that can be utilized for analysis. So in this screencast, we went through the procedure of how we can analyze a feed forward controller and develop an equation from a steady state balance to develop a static controller.